Hey everybody, what's Christmas really about to you? You know, millions all over this country and around the world are celebrating the birth of Christ. Everybody wants to talk about Jesus on Christmas. Everybody wants to say, oh, he's the reason for the season. Let's give gifts in the name of Jesus. Let's, let's, let's just acknowledge who he was in his birth. But the rest of the year, many people have no room for him whatsoever. Many people don't want him in their life. They don't feel they need him in their life. But one time a year, they want to acknowledge him and just say, God, we appreciate what you've done. Now just keep your distance. And I know that may sound hard, and this may not be the Christmas message you were looking for, but I promise you it's the one you need today. Because there's more to this thing than giving gifts. There's more to this thing than having a tree and having family gather around and, and eating. This is about your soul. This is about an eternal difference made in your life. Your life, independently, individually, you were important enough that Christmas happened. The Bible says in Luke, the second chapter, verse 7, something that I want to read to you that is a precursor to what happened through Jesus' entire life for 33 years and beyond, even now today, what's going on. The Bible says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. When God came to this world, in his own world, his own creation, there was no room for him. They didn't have anywhere for him to be born. And then later on, he even told someone that was wanting to follow him when he was older. He said, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. He didn't own a house. He didn't have a tent. He didn't have anything. He simply traveled and ministered wherever he went. Healing, delivering, saving. He came to set the captive free. He don't want people bound by drugs and alcohol. He came to heal. He don't want people walking around diseased and sick and dying. He came to set you free from anxiety and fear and depression. That's why he came. Not so we can just commercialize Christmas and, and make it about how, how many gifts we can buy and, and, and what's the bottom line and, and all this other stuff that America and the world looks at. He didn't even have a place to be buried. The very tomb he was put in was given, donated. He didn't have a donkey when he rode into Jerusalem that day when they said Hosanna to the king, the glory to God in the highest. He was on a donkey that was borrowed. Christmas is about the Son of God coming to this earth to save your soul and mine so we could live with Him forever. So we wouldn't put our faith in material things, we wouldn't put our faith in this world, but put our faith in Him, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. You know, when he hung on that cross for me and you and he was dying and everything turned dark, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't even have a place with, found with God then because he hung between heaven and hell in my place and in your place. With our sins upon him, with my addictions and your addictions upon him, with my bad habits and your bad habits upon him, what, what bad thoughts, whatever it is. Everything that would separate us from God he placed upon his son so we could be forgiven and have his righteousness. The Bible says in Galatians, the fourth chapter, verse four and seven, speaking about Christmas. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. The greatest gift God ever gave us was his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says while we were yet, God commended his love toward us, that even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what Christmas is about. But the greatest gift you and I will ever give him, it's not praise and worship, it's not tithing, it's not building big ministries. It's simply surrendering to him and saying, I love you, Lord. Forgive me. Save me. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to forgive me of my sins. Save my soul. Right where you're at right now, it doesn't matter. You call out to Jesus in repentance and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm tired of not living my life with you. I'm tired of only having room for you one time a year. I want, to have, I want, a room. I want you to be a part of me every day, every night. I want you to be the Lord of my life. If you'll repent and believe on Jesus, he'll save you right where you're at. You'll be born again. You'll be set free. And you will give God the greatest gift that you could ever give him. And by the way, it's the gift that he deserves 
your eternal soul because he died for it. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Jesus' name. Merry Christmas and God bless you. Please share.